Hey Aragoners, my name's Matt and uh, welcome to my backyard. Um, I wanted to spend a little bit of time telling you a little bit about the uh, Cricut 2. Um, I've been fortunate enough to have the Cricut 2 with me for about three weeks now, uh, going on four weeks and um, oh, this coming week. And um, I haven't done any videos on it. This is the first one that I've done. And um, to my knowledge, this Cricut 2 is probably one of the first ones, if not the first one, to uh, hit the U.S. market. So I feel extremely fortunate to have been shooting this for a few weeks and wanted to take a little bit of time to give you background about uh, the Cricut platform. Um, on my left, your right, is the, uh, the original Cricut. This is a 25 caliber Cricut that I got a little over a year ago now. It's a, a used gun that I got on trade and uh, I learned an awful lot from it. Uh, it's been um, kind of a surprise. I, I got it in trade and thought that I would keep it for maybe a few months. It, I've shot crickets before. In fact, uh, Sam, if you see this video, thank you for introducing me to the cricket platform. Um, but it's uh, it, obviously it's a bullpup design. Both of them are bullpup designs. And um, when I got it, I thought, you know, I'm, I'm a southpaw. I have a, a left eye dominant uh, shooting style. And, you know, I didn't really think that the, um, the Cricket 2 platform with the action being back here would really be that comfortable to shoot. Well, I was wrong. Um, what I thought was going to be a temporary gun for me turned out to be a, um, well, one of the guns that I'll probably never sell. Um, and that brings me to the Cricket 2, which is really the evolution of the Cricket platform. Um, as you can see on the original Cricket, we have the action on the back. And um, one of the main issues that people have had with the original bullpups, the Cricket and uh, also the, uh, the egg gun, is that you've got to reach way back to cock it. Um, well, that, all that has changed. Uh, the Cricket 2, um, I think, people would largely think is uh, a bit overdue. And uh, one of the things that it brought um, with it, excuse me, Jasper, is this, uh, the forward cocking. Uh, it's been something that people have been asking for for a really long time on these original bull pups. So uh, before I get too far into it, I should probably say that uh, this is a 25 caliber and this is a 22 caliber. And uh, as you can see, you know, they're, they're similar in design, but the, uh, the, the 22 is quite a bit shorter. Um, I think it's about 27 inches long. Excuse me, it's a little chilly out today. Here in central New York, we've got um, pretty decent weather for December. It's in the mid 30s and uh, I've got a little bit of a breeze. You'll probably pick a little bit of that up on the, uh, the microphone. But the, uh, the Cricut 2 is 27 inches. The original Cricut 25 is uh, 33 inches, and I believe that's the case for the newer Crickets as well. So 33 inches long and 27 inches long. And, um, you know, right here is where I do a lot of my shooting. And uh, I guess I'm still surprised how comfortable um, both of these Crickets are to shoot. I'm not really a person to walk around property or uh, the woods and do shooting, which is really really what these bull pups are designed to do. Um, I do a lot of my shooting here in the backyard off of tables and bags as you see them. And um, contrary to what I thought, I, I didn't think this would be a comfortable platform, but it, it really is. And with the forward cocking, that really makes the, um, the platform uh, quite nice to shoot. And um, I'll set this aside. And as you can see, um, I don't have a magazine in here, so it's unloaded. But as you settle in, it's a very easy, easy reach. Length of pull on the gun is about 14 inches, um, so that's quite comfortable. It shoulders quite well. Um, you know, for initial impressions, uh, the Cricut 2 and this smaller platform for the 22 caliber, it's really nice. Um, accuracy has been, well, really what I was expecting based off of my experiences on the 25 caliber. Uh, here in my yard, I'm able to shoot out to about 70 yards. And um, not to take anything against the, uh, take anything away from the 25 caliber, 
but in my, my distances out to 70 yards, I would say the 22 caliber with the right pellet really keeps up with the 25 caliber. And that's really, that's really what I was hoping to find out is whether or not in my yard, um, 22 caliber seems to be perfectly fine. Um, uh, wind obviously is gonna be a determining factor, you know, in, in accuracy. You can't beat the physics of a, um, a heavier pellet with a better BC. It's just gonna get blown around less. But if somebody's looking for uh, just an all-around platform, uh, the 22 caliber Cricket 2 is, is really, really hard to beat. Um, and with the advent of the, the front cocking, uh, it's, it's really nice. Turn the gun around a little bit more so you can see that, and I'll fire off around. Um, so no pellet in the chamber. It's quiet. Um, I don't know what else, you know, you could really ask for a platform. Um, when I got the gun, it was uh, brought to me, shipped to me by Charlie. He's the Charlie um, Freer from Georgia Air Guns. Um, he's been, as far as I know, one of the, uh, the best resellers or vendors of air guns that I've seen. Uh, he goes through every gun. Uh, he provides test targets, uh, chronograph information. And uh, he does some barrel preparation and um, additional things to the gun. Um, he'll give you a test target on that. It lists velocities for, for pellets, accuracy at 40 yards for three or four different pellets. Um, and he also does things in, which in, here in central New York might not be the best. I, I have to say that you know it's listed that he um, lubricated the hammer spring. Here with temperatures going down, I shoot down into the 20s, um, maybe even colder. Once I get in here with uh, a little heater turned on. So I have seen that the velocities do go down once we get below freezing. So I think that the viscosity of lubrication, or I should say the lubrication um, does get thicker as the temperatures get down. And I have seen the, uh, the velocity drop down um, quite a bit, you know, once we get below freezing. So um, my testing in Jord uh, and uh, Charlie's testing was pretty much the same with 18 grain pellets. It's, it's truly right around 37 foot-pounds of energy, which is about 950 feet per second. Um, when it gets cold, that velocity does drop for me. So I do think that I'm going to need to take apart the, um, the hammer spring, probably wipe down the lubrication. You know, cold temperatures, I don't think you can change the physics of what uh, various lubrication uh, will do to it. So I think that uh, as temps go down, uh, viscosity gets thicker and that's slowing down the hammer springs. So I was getting as low as maybe about 850, 860 feet per second at the same tune level. And what I mean by that is um, on the back of the gun, you've got a hammer spring adjustment, which you could um, increase by turning clockwise, which brings up the velocity, turning it counterclockwise, reduces the amount of tension on the hammer spring, and it lowers the velocity. So without having adjusted this, the the gun did lose, um, I'll say probably around 70, 80, 90 feet per second at these really cold temperatures. We'll see what happens when I take this apart in the future. And I'll, I'll come back to this gun and, um, you know, once we get into December and into January and, and see what it's like to make the gun shoot a little bit more reliably with um, colder temperatures. Um, so velocity is, um, velocity and energy is right where uh, caliber gun said it was going to be. Um, Stephen Archer did a report with some of the earliest information about the Cricket 2 that I was able to find and I think it's uh, his report said that the um, the 177 Cricket 2 would be about 17, 18 foot-pounds of energy. 22 uh, this gun would be about 37 and the 25 caliber was going to be about 59 foot-pounds and that's from the factory. So what that means with what Georgia Air Guns and Charlie can do um, he didn't change the amount of energy this puts out. Um, we'll see what happens with the people who are buying the 25 caliber. Um, his power tune is uh, typically bringing that up. This gun was not power tuned, by the way. Um, so uh, we'll leave it to Charlie to see what he's able to do with um, bringing the power up. But um, honestly, where I am now is uh, wanting to bring the power down a little bit and see how the gun performs. Um, like I said, I just recently started decreasing the hammer spring adjustment 
to see what that will do with the efficiency numbers. Um, uh, one turn counterclockwise on the hammer spring adjuster brought it down um, almost nothing. Uh, two turns uh, counterclockwise on the hammer spring adjuster did bring the velocity down from 950 down to right about 900. Uh, I saw it vary in the beginning. It was uh, about 890, and then it seems to stabilize after maybe a magazine or two at about 905 feet per second with JSB 18s. So that's right around 33 foot-pounds of energy for that 18 grain pellet. And um, one of the really impressive things about this particular gun and um, uh, the, the CZ barrel, and by the way, I believe it's the uh, 177 and the 22 caliber that have the CZ barrels, 25 caliber or maybe above have the Lothar, Lothar Walther barrels. But uh, the CZ barrel really is very unpicky, if that's a word. It, um, it shot the, the JSB and FX 18s fantastically at 50 and 70 yards um, at 950 feet per second, which is really um, kind of surprising because, you know, conventional wisdom, you know, Diabolo pellets really want to be around, I don't know, high 800s. Um, so 950s pushing them, pushing them pretty hard. Um, so now that I'm dropping the hammer spring down into the 900 foot per, uh, feet per second, JSB 18s continue to do well. In fact, they even did well with those colder temperatures where um, I was seeing them in the 850, 860 feet per second range. So we've got almost 100 foot per second range uh, where the, um, this barrel shooting the 18s well. Uh, pellet pickiness, it, it isn't. Um, I will say it did not like the Monster original, the JSB Monster original pellets. At 50 yards, they were all over the place. Um, you know, typically I'm shooting a target that might be a bullseye, you know, within um, anywhere from two inches to one half of an inch. So I could have multiple uh, bullseyes on a uh, basically eight and a half by 11 target paper. Uh, I had to switch to one bullseye on an eight and a half by 11 and uh, the JSB Monster Originals were really grouping at two, three, four inches and some of them didn't even hit the paper at all. So outside of that, um, the JSB Monster redesigns were phenomenal. The uh, Barracuda Match, um, they were the 5.51 millimeter, 22 caliber obviously. Uh, the Barracuda Matches were phenomenal. Um, I wish I had more of them to test right now, I, I ran out. I've got the 5.52 and the 5.53 which are not quite as good, but we'll also have to see how they do. Um, those were shooting at the original 37 foot-pound of energy. I'll be retesting what I have left at the, um, the 33 foot-pound level and we'll see how we do with those. Um, and uh, as I continue to uh, decrease the hammer spring setting, I'm also looking forward to testing some of the lighter pellets. The, um, uh, obviously the Crossman Premier's uh, hollow points, I've got those. I've got some field target trophies from H&N. So, you know, these 14 grain pellets, and I think I also have some JSB Express, which are in the 14 grain range. So I'm really excited to test those as I get the, um, the energy level down to you know, not be slinging the 14 grainers as fast as they would probably be uh, shooting at 33 foot-pounds now. And uh, like I said, you know, efficiency of this gun, uh, out of the box at 37 foot-pounds for a 22, it wasn't great. It, it's delivering what it was advertised. So going back to the original tune, I am getting at 37 foot-pounds from a full 300 foot-pound, um, uh, 300 bar fill. I was getting uh, a full 60 shots from that in my testing. In fact, I think I got 65 shots when I was doing uh, a mixture of various pellets on one day of shooting. So I don't typically fill to 300 bar. Um, I've got a, uh, a carbon fiber tank that I fill with a shoe box. So I'm able to get your typical 4,500 PSI. So I only get a couple of full fills from a, a full carbon fiber tank fill topping off the gun. Uh, but one of the things I discovered that I really wasn't expecting is that having a gun that can fill to 300 bar actually is really kind of cool because I'll get those first couple of fills I have to be careful of as far as opening up and watching the um, uh, gauge on the front of the tube. Um, so again, manometers up there. After those first couple of fills, it's not going to reach 300 bar. So literally I could crank it open, go do something else, load a magazine, come back and the air in my tank and the air in the cylinder simply equalize somewhere below that 300 bar range. So 
kind of one of these unexpected benefits is unlike a, uh, a gun that fills to 200 bar where you have to, or 220 bar, where you have to monitor and keep an eye on it. Here you can fill it up and just shoot it. So um, it's, a nice, it's a nice advantage to it. Um, so um, I've been talking up the gun. Like I said, this was probably the first um, Cricket 2 to be uh, here in the U.S. I did run into an issue when I first got the gun. I was examining it, kind of, I'll say, fiddling with it. And one of the things I did was loosen the shroud, which literally just unscrews. And when I went to uh, put the shroud back on again, I noticed as I was tightening the shroud that the barrel rotated just a little bit. So um, being a PCP, you've got air cylinder, regulator, valve, and then a port that allows the, the pressurized air to go up into the barrel. And once you rotate the barrel a little bit, that transfer port will get out of an alignment. So I did have to, um, before I even shot the gun, I did have to re-index the barrel, which is, you know, again, because I had a 25 caliber four, I was fairly familiar with that. There is a, um, you have to take the scope off, but there is a, um, a port that goes down through the scope rail that allows you to see a dimple that's been marked on the top of the barrel. And you know, with the scope off, you remove um, an Allen screw up here, and then caliber gun gives you a small threaded, I'll say a key that goes down through the scope rail that allows you to, as you tighten that, find where that dimple is rotating the barrel, set it, and then, and again, if, obviously this is with this little side plate off, um, tighten up the, um, the clamps that pinch the barrel in, in two points right here within this action and then you're good to go. The, um, the barrel's indexed properly. It wasn't a big deal, but again, it's, uh, it's something that Charlie's aware of. And um, my guess is, is that um, the gun came to me, like I said, lubricated quite a bit. Um, I mentioned the lubrication that Charlie did back here on the hammer spring, but there is also a fair amount of lubrication up on the, um, the cocking mechanism. And um, as, as you cock the gun, there's actually um, uh, a, a circular retainer that goes around the barrel and linkage that connects um, that to your your actual uh, receiver mechanism back here that um, cocks the hammer spring and indexes the magazine. But what I found is that I, I think that some of that lubrication that's in here got in behind the barrel perhaps when Charlie was doing his tuning and that's my best guess is why it, it did rotate a bit on me. So he's aware of that and um, the other thing that happened to me is uh, probably about two or three hundred shots into using the gun. I was shooting it and um, I got that telltale sound of, gosh, I just, I just blew an O-ring um, on the inner, inner barrel O-ring, you know, what I would of, often refer to as kind of the breech O-ring, probably t not technically right, but that O-ring that's at the back end of the barrel, that when you push the probe forward, it seals the air behind the pellet, so when you gun shoot the gun, it goes out. Well, I took a shot and man, it sounded just like that O-ring blew, which, you know, it was a little surprising that it happened that early. Well, it did not end up being that O-ring that blew. It was actually the, um, the linkage that connects the cocking mechanism uh, to the action back here. There's two set screws that hold the, the linkage in. And basically what had happened, I think, is that the linkage, as it goes into the piece that goes around the barrel, those set screws probably weren't set in on the indentation or detent on the, um, uh, the linkage arm. So eventually those set screws just weren't holding enough. And as I cocked the gun, or probably more accurately when the gun fired, it separated. So the linkage was no longer connected. So I did have to take off the side plates again, um, pull the linkage back into the, uh, the piece in here, and reset the set screws, truly making sure that they were um, on the detent of that linkage piece. I probably have 300 shots more since then. It hasn't been any issue. At some point, I probably will get in there and take a little bit of Vibratite, uh, the blue Vibratite, and clean this up and make sure that that's set again because once, once you get those set with Vibratite, I know they're not gonna move. If you need to get them out, you will be able to, unlike um, the harder Loctites. Uh, but the gun's been solid. You know, These two issues, the barrel index, indexing and the linkage separating. And again, you know, as Charlie gets these guns and sends them out to people, I do know that he goes through them and I've been in communication with, with him and um, the factory does know about this, so maybe you know it could have been something there. Uh, Charlie didn't do anything with this, so he will be checking these as they go out um, 
based on what he said. Uh, so thinking about, let's see, what else we need, need to talk about. Um, it's not really a review of the scope, but I should mention that I do have a, um, a Sightmark Citadel. It is a 3 to 18. Um, so it's, for me, it's a fairly, it, it's honestly the most expensive scope that I've purchased. It meets up very well to this platform. Um, don't remember the specs on the length, but I would say, you know, for its range, it's certainly not a compact scope. Um, it's got a beautiful reticle in it. Um, action on the um, adjustments is fine. Uh, the reticle is illuminated. Um, I do like the reticle quite a bit. It has just a single dot in the very center, and then it's got the, the, the mill hash lines, you know, very typical, nothing exceptional. Uh, it's very nice in my opinion. Sharpness is, is good, close to very good. Um, I can only compare it to other things that I have. Um, the Cricut 25 has an SWFA SS 16 power. I would say it's comparable to that. Um, maybe, maybe just a hair not as sharp, but one area where this truly does shine is the um, uh, uh, AO focus. It's probably the most accurate to what I've measured in my yard. At 25, 50, 70 yards, the measurement is dead on. So, I mean, that, that's kind of cool. I don't need to range find necessarily with this gun. It's not ever going to be a field target gun. But um, uh, the Sightmark Citadel is probably the most accurate in that, in that regard. And it's been a very solid, um, solid scope for this platform. Um, as you can see, I've got it uh, mounted pretty much at the very fore end of the rail. You know, if I were to do this, um, or if I were to get another scope, it would be very tempting to get a, a compact scope for it. I'm kicking myself, I did have a compact scope for a while that just seemed too short for any of the guns that I had up to this point. It was before I got this or my original Cricut. But I certainly would consider getting a compact scope for it. Um, so, um, uh, negative issues, again, rotating the barrel when I first got it, the linkage separating once, um, uh, that should not be a problem for anybody else. As Charlie gets these and sends them out, he will be checking them. Uh, I guess it wouldn't be a cricket without talking about the loading of the gun. It is a, um, uh, I'll say a fiddly mechanism. Um, the Cricut 25 and this one are, are very, very similar, not exact. Um, so you do have a magazine holder back here, holds four magazines. Um, I'm not going to load it uh, because I do have both of my magazines happen to be loaded. I don't want to shoot the gun right now. But the idea is that you would cock the gun fully, pull this lever back, slide in the magazine. It's in. If you were to chamber a pellet by pushing this forward, you would notice this lever go forward and drop a little bit. So there seems to be a little bit of a difference between the action on my older 25 caliber and this where with the older 25, I would have to kind of bring it forward and down. I don't think that gun, when you chambered a pellet, would kind of set itself automatically. So small difference. This one is a little bit easier in that regard to use. Um, so I'll take that out to remove the magazine. Literally just pull it back, comes out. Um, I received three magazines from Charlie, and I think that's the standard. Um, one of the magazines, actually, I would mentioned somewhere along the line that I I had dropped one of the magazines from my Cricut 25 and one of the um, uh, one of the holes where you where you seat a pellet, it uh, I, it got a flat spot on it. So one of so one of the magazines really wasn't that it wasn't perfect on my 25 anymore. So I did get a nice uh, 25 cal as one of them. So I do think you get three. I got two two 22 caliber magazines and one 25 caliber. So um, thank you for that, Charlie. Um, uh, other things that Charlie does, get this, um, you know, it's, the Cricut platform is one that uses a fill probe. So you pull this uh, far, uh, front part of the uh, air cylinder forward and your um, probe goes into that. So uh, the first time I've ever gotten an air gun that the probe came with the quiz, quick connector for it. So thank you, Charlie. Um, I assume that's something that he does with all the guns. He, he includes that. Um, he includes a crown saver and some patches. Um, so you know, the, the, the level of tension and um, kind of, you know, thank you, thank you, thank you for giving one of those quick disconnects. It is such an easy thing to forget about when ordering one. But, um, 
you know, there you go. I've got a Brocock that has a different type of connector and I've got the Cricut. So it's nice that the original Cricut 25 does the same thing, um, same sort of action. In fact, I think I'm using the same probe for both. So it's great when you have two different guns that really haven't changed much at all. They both use the same probe, same connectors. So I could fill them both. Uh, so I think that's probably all for now. Um, uh, I will be doing probably another update in a month or so. Uh, thank you very much for um, watching this video. I hope you found it useful. Make sure this is closed safely. Uh, so do I sound like a fan of the click crickets? Um, yeah, it's because I am. Um, I guess I could only compare them to what I've, what I've owned and what I've shot before. And um, I, I really like the platform. It's, uh, it's a great gun to hold. It's a great gun to shoot from the bench, which maybe it's just me. I'm, I'm not a big guy. I'm five foot six. If you're six foot five, you know, would you find it as comfortable as me? Probably not. Um, but for me, it's, uh, it's a short gun that has truly sold me on a short platform. Will I ever get a, a full length rifle again? I don't know. Um, at this point in the game, I don't really see any downside to having a, uh, a short platform like this. Um, it's easy to shoot. Um, I'm used to the action. Uh, I think some people will, it will be a learning curve to get used to the um, loading process and wishing you had three hands. Um, it's not as adjustable as some guns. Um, my Brocock Sniper has an externally adjustable regulator. Yeah, that's kind of cool. Um, how often do you adjust the regulator? I, I've, I play with it, find what I like, and I leave it there. To me, it's much, it's much more handy having an externally adjustable hammer spring, um, which the Brocock Sniper does not have. I've got to um, take the action out of the stock to adjust the hammer spring setting. And I would take this any day over the week over an adjustable, externally adjustable regulator. Uh, would both be good? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> um, I guess I'd love to have, um, have both, but um, I don't miss having an externally adjustable regulator. Um, so uh, I hope you enjoyed watching this. And uh, like I said, I'll probably do, be doing more of these in the future. And maybe it'll be warmer. Maybe I'll do it inside. Sorry if I'm looking cold and stiff. It's, um, it's a chilly day. It's breezy. But i um, glad you're able to join me here in my backyard. And um, let's see. Jasper, come here, Jasper. No, he doesn't want to come out. So, for me and Jasper, uh, thanks for joining us, and um, I hope you all have a blessed Christmas and uh, happy holidays. All right? Thanks, everybody. Bye-bye.